Today I'm going to tell you how to transition from Apple to Windows and Android. So I got a comment in one of my YouTube videos talking about how I should discuss how I transitioned over and maybe give tips on how to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a bank episode. Basically, I filmed this ahead of time and it is being used right now as I'm on vacation. Now my first tip on how to transition to Android and Windows is you gotta stop using Apple software. Basically, if you're doing video editing and music production, stop using Logic, stop using Final Cut Pro. And maybe you're not using them, so you'll be fine. But if you are, you gotta go to the alternatives. There's Studio One, there's Reaper, there's DaVinci Resolve, Adobe has a suite of programs you can use. So you got to stop using those Apple only programs and basically use programs that work for both. So that way when you swap over, all you're really doing is switching your hardware. On the Windows side, if you get used to using all the programs that work on Windows as well as Mac, you'll just have to get used to the way the Windows work. And after the UI issues that you might not be used to kind of get resolved, then everything else would be the same. And then plus you can game. Now on Android, it's the same you get your app sorted out and then when you switch over basically you're just kind of switching hardware and the difference shouldn't be that big and also the notifications are a lot better on android so that's a nice little bonus too now after that big step is taken care of the next step is the accessories now with windows unless you're using an apple magic keyboard or magic mouse your mouse and keyboard should work on windows and a lot of times like my Razer stuff doesn't have software on Mac, but it does on Windows. It's a better transition. You can have more hardware. So on Windows, that transition isn't that big of a deal. Now on the Android front, you've got accessories that you can use for both, like the AirPods. These I can use for Android. The only problem is you can't really tweak the settings on these. You kind of just have to use them like normal Bluetooth earbuds, but they still work. I ended up getting the Galaxy Buds, which I think I've already said, I think these are a hair better, but these with being able to tweak the settings and being able to track them in the Samsung Galaxy Smart Things app. And also I got them on sale. If you got these, you should be okay. You can stick with these, you'll be fine. Now the watch front, that's a little different. You cannot use your Apple Watch on your Android. So I got this, this is the Galaxy Watch 4 and I put a little $20 case on it, but it came, it looked brand new. It was an $80, it was called Renewed, so it was refurbished, but it looked brand new and $80 and it's got two more years of updates because it originally came with four years updates. So for $80, that gives me two years to figure out what I'm gonna do on the watch front. And I'm actually loving this watch. I was originally gonna switch over because of the Garmin. Like on the Garmin, you can only do the calls and text. I forgot what the name of the watch was, but you can only do that if you had Android. And that was like one of the pushing factors why I was going like, I gotta go Android, screw this Apple. It was one of many, but I got this and I'm like, man, this is really good. I'm really liking Samsung Health and I'm happy with it for now. I might not even get a Garmin because this is good enough. I want to see what they're going to do with the Galaxy Watch 7 and I might pick that up when that comes out. We'll see. The world is my oyster with Android because I don't have to use the Apple. I mean Apple you can use the other stuff but like the Apple branded stuff works best on Apple. So those are the two kind of big hurdles that you kind of get through. Once you make Apple just hardware to you instead of software too, it makes it so much easier and I have to say it's so worth it if you're unhappy with Apple if you're just tired of the way they treat you if you're tired of them wanting to use their software how they want you to use it instead of how you want to use it like in logic where the default sample rate is 41.1 and you can't set the default to 48 so you have to make a template and save the template at 48 instead of making a new project you have to do it you have to do all these stupid workarounds because they want you to use their crap how they want you to use it and I'm done with that. I'm angry. But it's easy. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys next week and have a good one.